all the mud. Strongman against the sea? Losing track of time almost an impossibility. Carbon fibre everywhere. More Mad Limited Editions than ever, and of course, most importantly, the Casio Royale. I give you the 2010s in this episode of the Illuminating Watches series on the rise of Casio. Watch on as we strap into a relentless ride through the decade and some awesome Casio watches from across their standard G-Shock, Protrek and Edifice ranges. There are some great ones in there. The Gravity Extra 56, GX56, or as it's nicknamed the King, was G-Shock's biggest watch to date when it came out in August 2010. It included hard urethane on the outside and soft urethane around the module, with Tayco Corporation's A-Gel applied for further inner protection with tough solar and 200 meters of water resistance. There were three launch colors and the King would get a few colorways along the years with my favorite being the purple DGK model. Floyd Mayweather has even been seen wearing a customized diamond encrusted one. On the same theme of going big, Casio would release the G-Shock GA100 and GD100 modules, both themed around power and strength with large cases. My favorite looking GA100 is this UOB designed with Jason of Kim in 2016, and this Gundam GD100. The GW3000 in May 2010 was marketed as an air racing watch due to its resistance to centrifugal gravitational force, built off G-Shock's sponsorship of Red Bull Air Racing and Matthias Dolderer in particular. The Red Bull link extends over to Edifice with their sponsorship of the Red Bull F1 team of Weber and Vettel with the EF550D. Within the Protrek range, they introduced the use of the tough movement from G-Shock and a link with Steven Segris, the professional alpinist, the PRW5000. Within the more standard Casio range, the AE1000W was my pick of the bunch, as seen in the film Mine with Arnie Hammer. A a new feature that we'd see peppered throughout different Casio analog ranges was smart access, as seen on December 2010's Oceanus OCWT1000, with you being able to pick different cities using the crown with the time and date updating automatically. We see some cool materials used with the first carbon fiber case and band square with the GWS5600, as well as ballistic nylon originally used in flak jackets for these M spec G7900s. There'd be a bit of a revival of the original 1994 DW001, popularly referred to as the Jason, for obvious reasons, with the G-001, which would go on to have lots of very colourful iterations. Some picks from the various limited editions of 2010 are the G-Shock Man that came with the multicoloured GA110, with the man being designed by Shiro Nakano of the Playset Productions design team. This Neon Genesis Evangelion GA110 is a particularly sought after model that came out in 2010 with colours themed after characters from the Japanese anime series with other picks for me being the D and Ricky GA110 and Subcrew 6900 model. A cool model, which I'm surprised doesn't have more of a following, is the GDF100, referred to by collectors as the Millennium Falcon model, with altimeter, thermometer, and barometer, with this 2012 Burton Snowboards version being a nice one. Following 2009's final Frogman in the GW200 range, 2011 would bring the GF1000 Frogman with an updated LSI that enabled faster processing, now made with stainless steel rather than titanium, which provided more heft. 2011's GW9300 updated the Mudman with a twin sensor with a digital compass and thermometer with this additionally seeing this carbon fiber strap insert on the GD200. Edifice took it even further with EFR501's carbon fiber dial. One of my absolute favorites and so much I just bought one and I see WatchGeek picked one up too is 2011's AL190 which harks back to the prior batteryless Casio models with the exaggerated solar panels. 2012's HCD S100 is a chunkier looking version of the same idea. I also I also quite like this W734 which in blue reminds me of a Bud Light. Very cool surfing squares of tide grass were available in 2011 with the GRX 5600 and GLX 6900. You can see a much deeper dive from me onto this topic on my video on surfing watches. I go really deep. 2011 is the year of release of the now beloved Juro MDV 106, the affordable diver notably favoured by Bill Gates. Limited editions I've called out for 2011 are this collaboration with the Alfie Streetwear brand in a 5500 and this collaboration with illustrator and designer Para in this 56. 600 model. Bluetooth, named after the Danish king Harald Blatan Gormason, who had a rotten bluish tooth, with the logo being a Viking rune of his initials, is a short range wireless technology that began its journey in 1989 with Niels Rydbeck at Ericsson Mobile. This would go through various iterations before arriving at version 4 
in 2010, which would be deployed in G-Shock watches linked to your phone in 2012 with the GB6900 and GB5600. This functionality enabled email and voice call notifications, find me, dropped connection notification, and automatic time adjustment. 2012 was G-Shock's first deployment of the so-called triple resist with the GW4000, with triple resist covering the three main types of gravitational acceleration, dropping shocks, centrifugal force and vibrations. The GWA1000 utilized the fine resin band, which would be spread throughout various models. The GAC100 had a lockdown crown, marketed as being analog tough, with the GA300 showing exposed gears in an Anadigi model, and the GA150 having a 3D design, as well as the funky colored GLX150 models. The classic AE1200WH arrived in 2012, of course referred to as the Cassier Royale, because of its likeness to the Seiko G757 that actually was in the Bond film. See my recent video on Seiko Digitals for the many instances of Seiko Digitals in Bond. Watches such as the SGW500 are regular looking Cassiers, despite being very G-Shock looking. Some cool textures being used in 2012 were the crocodile textured DW6900 and the corduroy fabric used in the GLS100. Fun limited editions in 2012 were the gold G-Shock Man. This collaboration with Maharishi, which is a UK streetwear company, was inspired by dazzle paint that was used on Navy battleships during World War I to confuse German torpedo operators. They call this the Bam Basel pattern. I also liked this Wu-Tang 20th anniversary model. 2013 brought the Range Man, designed for rangers and rescue crews, as a survival watch with a triple sensor enabling altitude, barometric pressure, temperature and direction readings, which can be accessed with a single press of a button on the front. Watches with this combination of altimeter, barometer and compass would often be called ABC watches. I like this Hong Kong Fire Services version of it. Protrek would deploy the so-called triple sensor version 3 in 2013 in the PRW 3000. A personal favourite from this year is the G. D350 with the one button press countdown timer and vibe alarm. I want to find an Owen Dippy version, so if anyone sees one, please let me know. A technology you hear about in 2013 is Casio's multi mission drive, which was deployed in both the Gravity Master GWA A1100 and the Edifice EQW A12000. This means that a single hand can be assigned multiple functions, which can help with things like world time, stopwatch, and identification of current function. The MTG S1000 would use the Core Guard design where the metal bezel on the front and metal back cover form a frame that guards the inner workings of the watch. The GW M500 seems to be a favourite of the excellent Greg Anderson YouTube channel and there's a lot to like as it packs a lot of features into a small watch with tough solar, multiband 6 and world time, a very nice alternative to more commonly seen G-Shocks with similar features. A watch that looks like a classic but is actually from 2013 is the AE1300 which is actually technically a referee timer. From limited edition land in 2013 I I wanted to give a nod to the Mastermind Frog, a collaboration with the Japanese fashion brand, the Winter G Lie GLS 8900 LV-2, linked with Louis Vito, the Winter Olympics medalist, and the GDX 6900 MNM, which was the MNM limited edition. 2014 saw the introduction of another new Master of G, apparently based on the idea of a strong man against the rough seas, which was an ocean concept, which was the Gulf Master GWN 1000B, which built on the maritime heritage of the Gulf Man. This had a barometer to predict weather changes, with the bezel showing over and under that supported this function, as well as a compass and tide graph. These rescue red and yellow versions I think are pretty nice. A twin sensor version, the GN 1000, would come out in 2015 with just the compass and thermometer. Talking of sensors, I'm sensing that you may have not subscribed as I know most of you aren't and I'm on the final push to 1000 subscribers so it's super super appreciate it if you consider doing so. And with that done, let's strap back in. Having access to the accurate time, about as close as guaranteed as you can get, Casio launched two watches utilizing the hybrid timekeeping system, combining both GPS and multiband 6 in the GPW1000, as well as in the OCW G1000, with the method deployed depending upon the user's location at the time. Popular music and pop culture more generally can be seen in the GBA400, combined with the G Mix app, with Japanese pop culture coming in through these GA400 options that also deployed the rotary switch. The GD120 does a nice job of combining the case of the popular G100 
with the display layout of the 6900, with this camo iteration in the same year being a pretty funky version. The GD400 is a model where the use of the bull bars seems to be standard across the range, and they look very tactical and military-esque with this blackout model and this HUF model. The GMA S110 provided an option for the smaller wristed like myself, but some of the models aren't the most masculine, I must admit. The MRG G1000 is one of the more badass releases of the year, incorporating so-called clad guard structure, where the crown buttons and protective parts were integrated into one for both shock resistance and reduction in size. The previously mentioned hybrid GPS and multiband 6 was present. It was the most expensive G-Shock available at the time at $3,000. In this year, I think we see the Casio A500WA with a world map which harkens back to the older world map models. I must admit though that Seiko wins the battle here for me through the 1979 A239. From limited editionville, we see the Bathing Ape Coca-Cola 6900, which I think is cool, although I've got no idea why those two brands are being combined here. And the 20th anniversary nod to the original 1994 Baby G with the BGD 500. 2015 brings the enormously popular, and indeed enormous, Mudmaster GWG 1000, which has a massive cult following. It had a triple sensor, it was an ABC watch with compass bearing, altimeter, barometer, and thermometer, tough solar, multiband 6, temperature resistance, and strong standard functions. Materials wise, it had sapphire crystal and a carbon fiber second hand, and those famous checkered buttons. And of course, was super mud resistant with how all the buttons were designed. It cost $750, which raised eyebrows at the time, although that would be pennies for the Hadinki favourite John Mayer, who has worn at least a couple of different Mudmaster models over the years. The twin sensor version, the GG1000, would come out the following year. The first G Steel was launched in 2015, and was a response to folks wanting a more affordable Metal G-Shock option at around £250. It incorporated a so-called layer guard structure, which was a double layer bezel that combines resin and metal in the GST100. The following year would see the release of the GST210 and 200 with stacked components. At 2015's Basel World, we would see the limited edition watches deploying Titanium 64, or TI-64, which is 90% titanium, 6% aluminium, and 4% vanadium, and is several times harder than titanium alone. This was displayed in the Mr. G G1000-RT. Some fun looking limited editions from 2015 were this funky rainbow bezeled EQB 500 RBB edifice with the Red Bull Infinity F1 colors of purple, blue, yellow, and red, as well as this PRX 8000T Manaslu Pro Trek, which was named after Manaslu Mountain, apparently in the top 14 highest peaks in the world. The Gulfmaster would become the first quad sensor watch with the GWN Q1000 with an altimeter barometer, compass, thermometer, and now depth gauge. The GA500 deployed a new molding technology for making 3D hands that look like a bike wheel and spokes with functions like a target time, which fits with its urban sports and cyclist target market. The GA700 is described as having a muscular design, with the GAX100 bringing a similar aesthetic to the G-Lide series with some cool colorways. The GLS 6900 is a snowboarding targeted watch with the bull bars and lower temperature resistance. A more standard Casio models launched this year with the Casio WV M200, where we can see a lot of G-Shock tech has passed through to the standard range, as well as the classic looking W217. And for limited editions, my picks for the year were the Safari Pro Trek in the PRG 600Y, as well as the Mr. G MRG G1000 HT, which was the so-called hammer tone model, which to a technique called Suki with traditional Akagane accents. By 2017, Casio had sold over 100 million G-Shocks, which is not bad, right? There were some nice pro treks in 2017, with the first being the WSD F20, positioned as a smartwatch with GPS and color map, the map data being provided by Mapbox, and I quite like this fluoride white edition. The other was the pro trek PRX 8000 MT from the Manaslu Prestige line with bezel made of titanium 64 with triple sensor. The GPW 2000 Gravity Master took bulletproof status the next step of the way with the so-called three-way engine which had GPS, multiband 6 and now Bluetooth interaction with your phone so you could never 
have any excuse for losing track of time now. The EQS 800 was Edifice's first solar chronograph with carbon fibre dial, with this Honda Racing version being particularly cool. The GA 800 was a three-hand and a digi watch with a fun version being the Celestial Guardian model. Mr. G B1000 would bring Bluetooth connectivity to the Mr. G range and a slightly smaller face, with the Mr. G 2000 having the three-way sync with bezel and band design by Bihu Asano. This would be the base for the later 2020 Bruce Lee model. The G-Steel range would introduce more streetwear elements like these tough synthetic leather bands, as well as their first analog chrono, Solar Carbon Edition, the GST B100X, made from Tureka and Nano Alloy technology from Torre Industries. From Limited Edition World, this Stash Collab GA100 is cool, and of course we have a whole bunch of 35th anniversary models, including the Big Bang Black, made from a matte black that was coated with particles, the diffuse reflection and make it super black, the gold tornado model and red out models. 2018 saw Casio clearly responding to the Apple Watch and Fitbit fitness boom, although to be fair they'd been way ahead on the wrist-based activity monitoring, and this was with the G-Squad range, initially with the GBA 800 with Bluetooth connectivity and step tracking with a 3-axis acceleration sensor. An example I particularly like as a boxing fan was this Everlast model. The GPR B1000 would update the range man with bigger digital numbers and positioned as an extreme survival fitness watch under the concept of survival toughness. Casio claimed it was the world's first solar-assisted GPS navigation watch. The Team Land Cruiser version I thought was quite cool. The GRB100 Gravity Master in 2018 had a larger dot-style LCD that was intended to look like a passenger window from an aircraft, as well as large hands intended for awesome readability for pilots. The MTG B1000 came out in 2018, which rather than the previous four-linked pipe core guard, deployed a new core guard which links the bezel and back cover to form a box frame. This model would be the basis for the awesome reference Volcanic Lightning model, Year of the Tiger model, as well as a Magma Ocean version, which would carry over to both the Frogman and the Rangeman. Something that seemed like a long time coming was the full metal stainless steel square, which arrived finally in 2018 with the GMW B5000, with a later edition being the so-called Tron, nicknamed for obvious reasons. The following year would see titanium versions of the same model. Talking of squares, a fun basic square for that year that was very square-esque was the W218H. My limited edition callouts for the year were the Big Mac, good luck finding one of these at a reasonable price, and the GA700 Dragon Ball Z model. We see a whole bunch of Protrex come out in 2019 with the PRT B50 Quad Sensor, the Heart Rate Monitoring WSD F21HR, the Smartwatch WSD F30SC, the smaller cased PRW50, and the PRW700 X1 with carbon fiber. Joe Rogan has been seen wearing these Protrex, as well as Mudmasters. A watch that almost seems like it might creep up on the square as being one of the more popular styles of G-Shock was the first Casio. Obviously named due to the Gerald Genta style design cues of the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. This is the GA2100. The design aimed to be a slimmer model that went against the chunky G-Shock image. It's a watch that seems to have got Casey Neistat on board the G-Shock train. And the Hote model is a fun one. The GWR B1000 Gravity Master would utilize the carbon core guard. This had a carbon monocoque case from carbon fiber reinforced resin, which integrates the case and case back. These carbon core models would be made available in the more affordable GA2000 series, which also had interchangeable bands. A crazy venture in 2019 was the 18 karat solid gold square, the GD5009JR, known as the Dream Project Watch. In contrast to that, some fun standard Casios were the WS1000H, the WS2000H with Step Tracker, the LWS1100 and WS1100, the Heavy Duty DW291 and the W96H. My final fun limited editions for this episode are this Lunar Rainbow MTG, the Throwback 90 series including a Christmas version which I think is pretty topical, this Antarctic Research ROV model named after the remotely operated vehicle with a silhouette of Antarctic to get in the backlight and on the case back. And finally, this Transformers Optimus Prime collaboration model. And that's it. Subscribe and like if you like, beside and say so. Have a great rest of your day. You should watch the other episodes in this series and here's a link to one here.